How's everybody doing out there? Uh, my name is Melvin Isaac. We are here again uh, at the Brick Art Medium, downtown Fulton Street in Brooklyn. And I'm here with uh, uh, a magnificent guest and artist. Uh, he's going to share all about what he does, his story, his meshes. Uh, he's at the, the Dorsey Art Gallery. And uh, he comes there every Wednesday with Art O'Neill. Uh, all of us is Art O'Neill uh, student. But uh, this one right here, uh, Okambi Pound, uh, I invite him over here to uh, talk about his art and his story. So uh, now, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to be asking Okani about some questions. So basically, Okani, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for coming to this show. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate you oh, inviting me. You're welcome. It's a pleasure and an honor to have mm -hmm. you here at the uh, Artistic Talent Show with me. Okay. Thank you, Melvin. You're welcome. So uh, the question I want to ask you, uh, when did you begin your interest in art? Um, well, I came to Brooklyn around 2010 along with my wife, uh, Allison. We settled in Brooklyn and uh, a good friend of mine, Carl McIntosh, invited me to um, Dorsey's Art Gallery. So once I got to Dorsey's Art Gallery, it really opened the door to the art world for me. And before, you know, I really didn't have a good appreciation for art in the sense that I didn't know how important it was in my life in terms of being surrounded by art. So uh, it really gave me a, a much better appreciation and awareness for art in the art world. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's your medium do you work with? Um, basically, I usually work with watercolor. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned Otto Niels, he took yeah. me under his wings and um, gave me instructions in working with watercolor. That's one of my favorite mediums. I mm -hmm. uh, also work with uh, graphite. Um, mm -hmm. Joe Belve gave me instructions in working with um, the graphite, uh, charcoal, you know, uh, pastels. I work with clay. Mm -hmm. When I'm in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, that's where I'm from. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. It's another artist there. His name is Ed Parker. I work in his studio and mainly uh, he's a sculptor. Mm. So I love working with Clay also. Um, and we're starting to work with Lionel uh, right now. But uh, between the graphite and the watercolor, those are my main and favorite uh, mediums to work with. Okay, all right. So uh, how do you choose projects or subjects? How do you choose those um, subjects or projects? Well, my main interest is in, you know, the uh, African world, the mm -hmm. descendants of Africa. Mm -hmm. And those are the subjects that I really want to display in terms of showing the dignity, the strength, the beauty, and the endurance that we, you know, had over the years dealing with um, what we have to deal with wherever we are in the world, you know. So I had a few trips to Africa where, you know, the people there is just so warm and, you know, they really uh, embrace me and made me feel at home. And uh, I wanted to depict that if I could. And uh, that's one of my goals, to try to show the beauty, to depict us as a people in a, you know, beautiful way. And to show our dignity, our strengths, you know. I also like to deal with you know, nature in terms of uh, I'm an initiate to Oshun, and uh, that's where I get my name from, Okambi. Okay. That name came out of an initiation to uh, the Orisha system, uh, the Orisha spirituality, and uh, it's basically we have to have immense respect for our environment, mm -hmm. immense respect for nature. And so we look at uh, as being human beings, just part of nature, you know, and we have to have respect and uh, uh, be in harmony with it as much as possible. So I try to show that in my artwork also. And also, you know, I want to look at nature in terms of, you know, where we live. 
you know, we are in nature everywhere we live. So no matter where we live, you know, we are in that um, abode, that setting, and I want to show that also. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a, a couple questions, direct questions, mm -hmm. but I want you to look in the camera and okay. talk to the uh, public. So All right. Okay, well, um, talk to them. initially my introduction into the arts was at the Camru House in Cleveland, Ohio. My mother uh, thought it was important for her children to have a background in music. So uh, we had a piano in the house. So I took piano lessons for uh, my early childhood. Um, and I stayed in the music arena from uh, around five or six years old to around uh, 12 or 13. So I played the piano, I uh, played the violin, and I ended up playing um, uh, bass. Um, but I wasn't, uh, didn't consider myself a musician. I did it because it was an educational process my mother wanted to embed in us. I was more interested in sports, things of that nature. Um, so that was initially. Then, of course, uh, being in the choir in the church also was the main genres I was into in dealing with um, the world of art then. As years went by, and uh, I uh, mentioned that I was initiated into the Orisha system, uh, the Orisha spirituality, um, the form of worship in the Orisha spirituality is completely an art form insofar as uh, it is completely embedded in the music, the dance, and the singing, and the musicians playing the various instruments. So the form of worship is uh, surrounded completely by art in that sense. So uh, again, I didn't really appreciate that until I entered into Dorsey's gallery. So I give credit to uh, Maori, uh, it's a concept that deals with what we come to earth to do, reaching our destiny. So I followed my path and I ended up at the Dorsey's Gallery. Um, once I entered the Dorsey's Gallery, I got bit by the art bug uh, from the instructions of, again, Joe Belve and Otto Nils. Joe Belve taught me how to draw. I always make the comment, when I first entered into Dorsey's gallery, I could not draw a stick man. And that's close to the truth, really. Uh, so under their, his instructions, and the, really the other artists there too, there's so many artists that come through Dorsey's gallery. They all help you out. They all give you instructions. They all uh, support each other. They bounce ideas off of each other. And it's really, uh, uh, creative session. And I really got bit by that community, creative, artistic uh, sessions that Dorsey Gallery provide. And again, Otto Nils give up himself freely. Anything he could help you with, he freely help you with. And um, he really took me under his wings and I'm so appreciative to him uh, for doing that. So once um, again, I entered into Dorsey's gallery. Really, they brought something out of me that I didn't know I had in me. And um, uh, once that e process of creativity takes place in me, I feel like it's a spiritual experience. It's not just me putting something on a piece of paper or me drawing something. Once the creative process takes place, I feel that I am in a spiritual realm where I'm just one of the tools that is in the creative process and the project takes over me. The project that I'm developing is also developing me at the same time. So that communication and that interaction is taking place and I really feel like I'm transported into a, another realm, another uh, awareness, another consciousness. So, and I, you know, it almost is um, uh, intoxicating. So I try to work as much as I can. I try to develop as much as I can. 
And again, I try to learn as much as I can from artists. And there's so many great artists that come, so many great artists that I'm surrounded with. The camaraderie amongst the artists is a, a educational experience for me. And um, I hope to develop more in doing the same thing, learning more, experiencing more, um, uh, listening, trying to understand how different artists approach their own type of uh, method of producing what they're producing. So it's really been a great experience for me and I hope to develop more in terms of becoming a better artist. The message I would like to leave with the public is that um, everything that we are surrounded with is an artistic expression. So the original creativity, no matter if you're into any type of spiritual Reality. And in that spirituality, there is a creative or a creator. Uh, everything emanates from that. And being a participant and being a product of creation, I think we need to uh, appreciate that more. And in doing so, I think it made me a better human being. It allows me to uh, develop my character. And the other message is that we need support. Artists need support. You know, black artists, our, uh, African artists, African American artists, artists from the Caribbean um, seem to be underlooked, you know. So I think we need to be supported um, and the public at large. We need your support to help us uh, support ourselves in uh, producing the type of uh, art that reflects who we are. All right. I want to thank you very much for coming on this show. It's a pleasure. It's an honor for you being here, for me interviewing you, you know, okay. and uh, for your message that you gave out to the uh, other the community, to the young artists, to the world. Uh, so that was really good in, in sharing your story. Mm -hmm. So uh, we came to the end now, and uh, more than likely we're going to be doing more of this interview again. Uh, because, like I said, I start off with the Dorsey with uh, Otto O'Neill first. And uh, he's like the protocol, so everybody else follow suit after that. And I think you did a great, a marvelous job here of uh, introducing yourself and telling your story. And I want to thank you again. Thank you, Melvin. And I uh, hope that you'll come here. Uh, well, you will come here again. Anytime. Anytime to, uh, you To share ask. your story yeah. to the public. Thanks, All right? thanks again, Melvin. You're I welcome. appreciate it. You're welcome. And this was uh, Okan B. Pounds, who is the artist that's at the uh, uh, Dorsey Art Gallery, and he's a member of the Fulton Art Fair. So you're definitely going to hear from him again. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. So